Hello everyone. The title of my talk today is Millimeter Wave Transceiver Chip with Antenna in Package. Here are the contents of my talk. The first part is a brief introduction of the research background. As everybody knows, millimeter wave is one of the key features for 5G or 6G wireless communications because millimeter wave has very wide absolute bandwidth which to provide very high data rate link. Besides, it has very small wavelength which means very small size circuits and antennas. These features make large-scale massive MIMO visible. Among many enabling technologies for millimeter wave communications, phased transceiver in grid circuits and their corresponding packages with antennas are the top two most important ones. In this talk, I will introduce the ICs and antennas we developed in the South China University of Technology. Now, let me introduce the first CMOS key components used in our system, the wideband low noise amplifier. The picture of the low noise amplifier chip is shown here. The size of the chip is 0.6 by 0.4 millimeter length in length. And the operating frequency of the amplifier ranges from 10.8 to 35.3 GHz with gain ranges from 9 to 12.5 dB. The noise figure is from 3.1 to, to 4.6 dB. The input return loss is less than minus 9, 9 dB. Now, uh, let's have an introduction of a new design, vector sum phase shifter. As phase shifter is a very important component in the phase array, so we have this new design. Here it shows the photos of the design phase shifter and its measured result. It can be seen that the performance is very good with RMS phase error ranges from 0.7 to 2 degree. The RMS amplitude error is 0.95 dB. The gain is minus 6.2 dB. The frequency range is from 18 to 26 gigahertz. The core size of the chip is only 0.45 by 0.35 millimeter square. Now let me introduce a new varactylist varactylist visual. Here is the photo of the chip and uh, at the left right hand side the spectrum of the 77 oscillator and the phase noise of the free running oscillator, which is minus 112 dBc at 10 megahertz offset. Now let's have a look of the transceiver with four plus one channels. The four plus one channel chip has four phased transceiver channels and one channel for phase and amplitude calibration. The four channels have their own variable no noise amplifier, variable power amplifier, and phase shifter. The shared the same up converter, down converter, and the IF amplifier. The calibration channel shares phase locked loop source with the four channel, four transceiver channels. Thus, we obtain the CMOS transceiver chip with four plus one channels. Now let's move to our design of millimeter wave gallium nitride in curated circuit. The first, first is a variable gain power amplifier will be introduced. Here is, is the photo of the power amplifier chip. The size is 4.2 by 
three millimeter. The frequency range is from 24 to 29 gigahertz. The output power is about 32 dBm, and the PAE is about 38%. When the VGS change from 1, minus 1 1.65 to minus 1.8 volt, the gain changes from 1.8 to 25.2 dB. The next part is variable gain low noise amplifier. Here is a photo of the low noise amplifier chips. The size is 2 by 1 millimeter. The 3 dB gain frequency range is from 17, 17 to 27.5 gigahertz. The lowest noise figure is 1.7 dB and lower than 24 dB in the whole operating band. The next part is about the gain. The gain, the Gadamonite Triad millimeter wave signal, single port double through switch. Here is a photo of the design of this PDT switch. The size is 0.17 by 1.7 by 0.6 dB or 0.6 millimeter. The operating frequency range is from 24 to 30 gigahertz. The insertion loss at one state, uh, on state is about 1.2 dB and the isolation is about 38 dB. By integrating the power amplifier, low noise amplifier, and the SPDT switch, an uh, integrated nitride millimeter wave front end module is obtained. The slide shows the plot diagram and the photo of the gallium, gallium nitride front end. The size of the chip is 2 by 3 mm square, including all input output ports and the power supply controlling pads. The next part is about millimeter wave antenna. In this part, I would like to focus on the decoupling method for wide angle scanning screen. The figure on the left side shows that there are three paths path that a patch antenna signal can go. The first path is for radiation to the far field. And the second is second one is the path coupling signal to labor patch. The third path is an actual path we design, intending to cancel the signal from the second path. We call this path as the decoupling path. As can be seen from the figure on the right side, the decoupling path consists of a strip in the same plane of the patch as the two wires connected to the ground from the strip. Two coupling structures are in arranged between the patches for free tooling of the decoupling strings and the face so as to achieve good castration of the past two. The figure in the upper left shows that the photo of the design antenna. The upper right is the setup for isolation and return loss measurement. It can be seen from the measured curve, showing in the chart that within the frequency range from 25 to 29.5 gigahertz, the isolation is larger than 22 dB, and the return loss is lower than minus 10 dB. The next part shows that the CMOS transceiver chip gallium nitride from the end module and the antenna array are integrated into a system. The two figure sphere shows the top and bottom view of the integrated system. The antenna patch and the coupling strip can be seen from the top view. The chips and the interconnection lines can be seen from the bottom view. As a summary in this talk, I introduced key millimeter wave components of CMOS and the phased transceiver chip, key components of gallium line track and the front end module, a millimeter wave antenna array with high isolation between elements to achieve
achieve wide scan angle. Finally, the system integrating approach is presented. Last but not least, I would like to acknowledge my colleagues and students in my team for their excellent contributions to their works I introduced here. Thanks.